Thank you very much, Frank. Thank all of you. It's great to be here. A pleasure and a privilege to be at, in New York at the Union League Club with this fine gathering. Uh, once upon a time, I lived here in Westchester, went to school at NYU for a while, and always enjoyed coming back. Um, although I'm often reminded I came up on the train, as many others did from Washington, of the story of the little girl, about five years old, who was trying to recite the Lord's Prayer and got confused and said, lead us not into Penn Station. <laughs> sort of the wisdom of a child. Um, the um, venue, uh, we're very well met in this club. This club is historic. It is devoted to memorializing the history of our country, a wonderful library where we've met, and uh, the programs that are staged here are dedicated to understanding of American history and uh, to uh, patriotic affirmation of that history. This is a pursuit that is sorely needed uh, elsewhere. Uh, Diana has heard this story before. I'll repeat it for you folks, though. I have a friend in Washington, a friend of some other people here named Pat Corton, who was a morning anchor on WTOP radio for many years. And he told me back in 1994, which was the 50th anniversary of D-Day, that he'd been out in the Midwest and watching some local TV show in which the uh, young lady, it happened to be a young lady, uh, reading from the teleprompter referred to the memorialization of D-Day and referred to World War XI. <laughs> uh, which would suggest that we're not teaching history very well, but uh, also not teaching Latin. Um, Although you would think that after all these Super Bowls, we know something about Roman numerals, but apparently not. Um, the importance of studying history is twofold. And uh, Frank, and by the way, I commend you, Frank, for all you do. Uh, it's a mutual uh, admiration. And the two uses of history are, first of all, to know our history which that young lady obviously did not, but also because of the lessons that are applicable to the present. And the more I've delved into these matters over the years, and this is directly related to Diana West's wonderful book, uh, the more I realize that the history we have been given, what is the conventional history, the establishment history, the consensus, whatever you want to call it, is pretty much bogus. Uh, and I have a, a rule that applies to this that I call Evans' Law of Inadequate Paranoia. Uh, which says that no matter how bad you think something is, when you look into it, it's always worse. And um, that is kind of the case with the way we have been taught our history of World War XI uh, and uh, the Cold War that followed. Uh, much of what is out there is an amalgam of court history that's glorifying the people who are in power, justifying their actions, error, and also disinformation, just absolute falsehoods. So this amalgam is very misleading in many different ways for many different reasons. The, the latter part is the most serious part, the disinformation that is embedded in what is called history. I'm reminded of what Mary McCarthy said about Lillian Hellman a name that may be known to some of you, who was a very left-wing writer of yore. And Mary McCarthy said of Lillian Hellman, who's an apologist for Stalin and the rest of it, every word she writes is a lie, including and and the. <laughs> and that's a pretty good description of a lot of what passes for history. But the law of inadequate paranoia applies to Diana West's book as well. When Diana was working on this book, she had a manuscript in hand, and we had met, we haven't known each other very long, maybe two or three years. She sent me the manuscript, and I read it over, and I said, Diana, 
if you say what you're saying in this book, you're going to be attacked. And that turned out to be the understatement of the decade. Uh, the attack has been much more intense than I thought it would be. I'm sure much more so than Diana thought it would be. But she was undeterred by that and remains undaunted. Her book is a powerful corrective to the court history, the disinformation, the error that is out there. And I said, uh, one of the phrases she uses in her book, uh, which, with which I concur, is that what we know about the problem of infiltration of our government and the consequences thereof is not the half of it. I would amend that to say we know maybe 10% of it. The true history is yet to be developed, and her book is a huge step forward in that process. The part of it that I guess is most salient and most to the point today is that indeed, as Frank has said, it shows the methods by which our government was taken into uh, camp, so to speak, by its own adversaries, our, our country's adversaries, and policies were perverted to support the interests of the Soviet Union. That is uh, very much, as Frank has said, a parallel to what is happening today in many respects uh, concerning the threat of radical Islam. Diana has performed a great public service here, and she has done so by the combination of talents that I think is unique uh, in the literary world today, in my experience. She is highly intelligent and talented, as you will know if you read her work. She is principled, has great integrity, and most of all, she is fearless. And that last quality is the one that has been tested most in recent months. But it's the quality without which the other two fall short. She is, in literary terms, what we used to call in sports, a triple threat. Intelligent, principled, courageous. A most worthy recipient of this year's award, please welcome Diana West. Diana.